Jesus and the Pharisees always seem to be at odds over the Sabbath, over what you could or could not do on the Sabbath. And Jesus, if you read through the Gospels many times, always it seems to be doing something, healing someone, doing something his disciples are picking wheat, doing something on the Sabbath that the Pharisees thought was quote-unquote work. And in the Pharisees' word, what they had done is they had said, the Lord rested on the seventh day, and so we are too. Now, to make sure that we truly rest, we're going to add a bunch of external laws that kind of insulate us from the laws of what Scripture says we should or shouldn't do. And that's, I think, where Jesus had his problem with the Pharisees. They added so many other things that it became untenable for anyone to be faithful to scripture and to live up to what the Pharisees were demanding. And so Jesus, I think, continually showed them that the Sabbath was not about keeping the external laws in terms of what you can do. Now the Sabbath started because, as I said, God rested on the seventh day. And the Sabbath was intended to be a day for rest, to worship, and to have joy in their relationship with God. That was the intention. The Pharisees took that to a very different place. And so I think what we see going on lots of times in Scripture is Jesus having this conversation and trying to help the Pharisees see that they are in fact wrong. A couple things I want to I want to point out here is in John chapter 5 verse 17 this is the story of Jesus healing the paralytic where he says, take your mat, stand up and walk. It was on the Sabbath and carrying anything on the Sabbath was considered breaking the Sabbath and was, you could be stoned to death for it by the Pharisees and the religious leaders. And so when they question him, he comes back and they persecute him and they say, and Jesus responds, to this idea of doing something on the Sabbath, he says, my father is still working and I also am working. What does that mean? Because he's talking about the, that God the Father is working on the Sabbath and so, so am I. If God rests on the Sabbath, what is this? I think this gets at this bigger picture that God is still at work. He is maintaining the universe. He is allowing births to happen, deaths occur. There are still things that happen within a Sabbath day. And because of that, what Jesus is saying, I'm doing the same kind of things. If you will, these are works of grace and of mercy that are on the Sabbath. And he is saying, these are things that are okay to do. You see, the, the Pharisees had turned the Sabbath into something that they had to live into. And Jesus is saying, no, the Sabbath was created for humanity for their benefit. He, that comes out very clearly in Mark chapter 2 at the end of it in verse 27, where again, this is the place where the, Fer where the disciples are picking, excuse me, um, heads of grain to eat on the Sabbath and the Pharisees get after Jesus saying why are you letting your disciples break the Sabbath like this and this is pretty clear what Jesus is talking about he's saying the Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath and so the Son of Man is Lord even over the Sabbath you see, the Pharisees had thought, this is how you make yourself right before God, is by keeping the Sabbath. And Jesus is telling him, no, that's not it at all. The Sabbath was meant to be a day of enjoyment, of rest, of worship for what God had done for you. And I think that's a good word for us today as well. We need to set aside time. To worship God, to enjoy His grace in our lives, to enjoy His mercy in our lives, 
to enjoy what he's given us as part of his creation. Because God is still at work in creation. Plants are still growing. The sun's still coming up. All the animals are still being taken care of by God. And we are being taken care of. And so on the Sabbath, it is an opportunity for us to enjoy all that God has provided for us. To acknowledge His grace and His mercy in our lives. That happens best on a Sunday for most people. Granted, people have jobs and they have to work. And I don't think Jesus is so particular that says you can't work on Sunday. But what I think He is saying is ensure that you have time in your week to rest. In our hectic worlds, even in the midst of pandemic, it is important to just take some time to be with God, to enjoy Him, to enjoy our families. The Sabbath was made for us, not us for the Sabbath. And so let us take advantage of what God has given us. This is a gift to enjoy. I invite you to do that this week. Take some time. Take a Sabbath break. Let me pray. God, thank you that you are here and you are among us. And we love you. And so be with us um, this week, we ask in your name. Amen. Alpha is just a couple days away. It's not too late to register or to get a friend registered if they're going to join with you. We invite you to do that, to get those folks re registered. This is a great opportunity to take a look at what is life all about? I mean, we were just talking about life is about taking a Sabbath break. We have lots of questions about how we're to do life well. And I think Alpha answers a lot of those. So I invite you and your friends to be a part of it. Sign up on our website, faithchurchmn.org. We also have our national gathering for our denomination called ECO, a Covenant Order of Evangelical Presbyterians. It's on the 29th and 30th of January, and there'll be five sessions with uh, special speakers. It is free, it is virtual, and it'll happen um, Friday afternoon and early evening, and then Saturday afternoon. And so I invite you to take care, take take advantage of it. You have to register. They'll send you a link so you can view it. We'll have some worship before the speakers. If you go to the ECO website, eco-pres.org, and go to National Gathering, you can see the lineup of the speakers as well. So I hope you'll take advantage of that. And even if you only take advantage of one or two, that's great. Just to give you a little idea of some of the things that ECO is thinking about, talking about, and get a little bit of experience of who ECO is as a, uh, as a group of believers. So, hope you take advantage of that, and I will talk with you soon. Bye-bye now.